like, you know, real cobra venom and golden coral cobra, which shut down your respiratory system. I'm at my brother's place. We just came up on some living dinosaurs. That's my brother. Whoop, whoop. His head is right there. With these adorable little snakes. I decided we will actually gonna lift the whole enclosure because I do not trust this at all. Hello all you wonderful people and welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new to the channel. Today it's gonna be quite different because guess what? I'm not at my own place, I'm at my brother's place. And here you have him. What up guys? I hope all of you that's watching my channel has also checked out my brother's channel. And now you may be wondering what I'm doing here. Well, it's like this. These two enclosures are my old enclosures. And I have given them to my brother. Because he needs them for two snakes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, we're going to set these up and we're also going to change rooms because he has his snakes in a different room. So, that's what we're going to do these few days and we're also going to do content with Venomous, of course. So, stick around guys and I really hope you'll enjoy this. Here's a bit feisty. Yeah, she looks really thick. So now a few hours later with food in our bellies, we have uh, put in the plugs, the electronics, just to check that the light is working and the thermostats are working, which they are. And the settings I had before actually still work. So. The only th settings we changed is uh, the one in the enclosure below. But yeah, now we're gonna fill it with substrate and we're gonna put in the decoration in one of them or how many? Uh, yeah, we're gonna do some decoration in this one uh, because uh, this one, uh, all the decorations are already in use because the snake that will go into this enclosure actually already has an enclosure uh, that is fully set up although this is a better enclosure for that snake so that's why I'm moving it over here yeah so it's gonna be great so now we're gonna fill it up with substrate and yeah then we'll take it from here so In this enclosure, the spinning cobra is going to be, right? Yeah, exactly. And the enclosure down below? Uh, it's going to be a puff adder. Okay, and uh, to the cobra you're using, what kind of substrate is it? Soil and... So it's this. It's called Square Terra. It's a 60-40 base mix. 60% okay. soil, 40% sand. Okay. And that's the only stuff that you're going to use for the cobra? Yeah. yeah. And for the puff feather? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make these bioactive down the line. And okay. since this is a more arid uh, enclosure, uh, you want like a base of a more uh, humid substrate for the isopods and stuff. Uh, to go if the rest of the enclosure is too dry. Okay, so the isopods and all the other uh, cleanup crew, they need the humidity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it will of course vary from species to species. Some are more tropical and some actually thrive in a little bit drier habitat but they of course still need um, a lot of humidity yeah okay and um, uh, the other kind of substrate is this right yeah so this is stone desert by exoterra right yeah the sonoran orchard uh, there's a few of these 
they're all the same but it's just different colors like this one is more yellow then there's a black and then there's a red one and it looks like this looks pretty good yeah it's a very very natural looking substrate it's exactly what you expect to find in places like Africa or any stony desert type places okay. well I think this is going to be awesome yeah although I wish I had a little bit more substrate yeah but you can add in later yeah of course and I'm gonna use the soil on this side because here you have the heater so this will be the cool side and I think that will be a lot better I think that's a really good idea actually so I'm just gonna throw all of this in here I'm gonna mix it up a little bit so this is the result for now and this is where the puff feather is going to be right yeah and here's for the cobra and this is just a stick in there for, for now yeah it's not just gonna lie <laughs> this is not the only decoration we're gonna do in here so are, it's, are you sure yeah i think it's a little bit sad yeah a project for tomorrow but this is mostly done just a water bowl and uh, yeah it's good to go but you you're gonna redo this you said yeah at some point uh, i want to bring some more life into it like some plants and stuff yeah so yeah i'm just gonna have to research that and see where we'll end up but yeah a nice little climbing thing in the middle since they actually do like to climb quite a bit but yeah i think we'll be quite happy in here for now i think so too i think it's going to be great actually yeah so but yeah, now we just have to, well, do everything else as well. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of work, but when it's finished, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I hope so. Here walking my dog, where my brother lives. And we just came up on some living dinosaurs. Hello birdies. Oh, they're fighting. Well, this is a reptile channel and well, birds are basically reptiles. So, if you don't believe me, go watch Clint's reptiles. He can explain that much better than I can. And I honestly think that birds are just really cool animals. Living dinosaurs. So, this is the room before. It's a bit echoey in here right now. Yeah, and that's my brother. Whoop, whoop. Um, yeah, so now we're going to move all the furniture, the TV and all that. Uh, but this humongous enclosure is uh, we're not going to move that and yeah for those of you that are wondering it's completely empty of animals but maybe someday you will get something for that yeah who knows what the future might hold yeah. but first things first we're gonna get this room all set up and ready to go yeah it's gonna be much better light in here i think uh, during the day of course i mean yeah better light better space safer yeah safer of course so yeah so we have a lot of work to do but uh, the good thing is there's two of us so hopefully we will get this done pretty quickly but yeah now we just have to get to work yeah so what's the plan 
So yeah, we're gonna start with the Spectacle Cobra. And I'm actually uh, gonna pull out everything because he's quite skittish. Okay. So um, in order to make it easier for me to actually get a hold of him, uh, I better remove all the foliage and all the wooden stuff. So he, yeah, so he doesn't get tangled up in all that. Okay, so tell me what to do. Uh, yeah, just for now, stand back. Okay. So remember guys, this is deadly venomous snakes. So if you're not experienced, you should never handle them, especially not on your own. But Tom is very experienced in this, so he knows what he's doing. That's why he takes me to stand back. So uh, he is the one leading this, not me. Well, maybe I don't have to do much at all. Yeah. Because he is right here. Maybe I can get some footage of this. Yeah, well, yeah I'm actually going to pull this out because it bugs me. So as you can see, he is, or she, I actually don't know the sex of this thing. Uh, it's quite skittish, so, yeah, as you can see, it's all over the place, so. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, the smaller the snake is, especially when it's venomous, the more dangerous it almost becomes. Because they are so agile. Yeah. As well. The bigger snake is typically more sluggish, if you can say that. Or what do you say, man? Yeah, uh, smaller snakes tend to be a lot twitchier. And, well, as you can see. Do you need a second hook, maybe? No. I don't think so. Just have to grab it, and I'm gonna show. You guys have a beautiful snake. So yeah, I'm not gonna bother it too much because it's a young snake. It's not very used to being handled. So baby steps yeah. for sure. So that's the first one. So, which snakes or snake are we moving up? So yeah, now we're gonna do uh, the puff adders. And uh, puff adders is actually one of the f fastest striking snakes in the world. And they have a terrible bite. And they are responsible for a lot of fatalities every year out in Africa. But on the other hand, they're super easy to work with. I mean, especially these guys because they're still young. So I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna let me do one. You gonna let me do one? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this is exciting. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you first, please. Yeah, so, so there's two of them in here. And uh, there's two uh, different localities. There's a Tanzanian one, and there's a Lake Nakuru one, and they are very, very different. And this is one of the things I've, I find very interesting with um, locality animals. The sheer difference, just completely natural. So, let's take a look and see. Pull that out. You see, they always hang out in here. So, as you can see, the tiny one, that's the female. And the big one, that's the male. The female, the darker one, is the Tanzanian. And the lighter one is the Lake Nakuru one. And the puff adders are actually one of the rare cases where uh, the male actually get larger than the female. And yeah, the female is 
Of course. Somewhat slippery. Yeah, she... Not a fan of me today. But yeah, I'm doing the female because she is a little bit more skittish and a little bit more active. So even though she's way smaller... Oh! Sorry. She is actually way, way more different and difficult to handle. So I'm just gonna make sure that she's in there and I'm gonna pass over the hook. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. And just as you guys know, I am not experienced in handling venomous sna snakes. Yeah. What I do is I handle snakes every day, but not the venomous. Yeah, so, so this you, is very exciting for me. Yeah, in that loop that sticks out right sure. there, take it underneath instead. Like this? No, from the other side, like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he's a little bit more vocal. Oh, I didn't get a grip of him there. I mean, I can't take over if you That's okay. feel uncomfortable. Just if he stays on the hook. Yeah. Here you guys have a puff feather. So beautiful. See? He actually stays pretty good on the hook. Yeah, he's super easy. He is beautiful though. So beautiful. And remember guys, this snake is deadly. Yeah. They are not to be taken lightly. No. What kind of toxins do they have? They have a cytotoxin, cytotoxin. Uh, meaning it will rot the flesh of your bones and you will get nasty, nasty gangrene. I'm a bit sweaty actually. That's what, that was a little bit nerve wracking, but yeah, I'm not used to venomous, but I want to be experienced. And this was awesome. Now we're going to move these adorable little snakes. They are so cute. But remember, they are as well deadly, so uh, not to be trifled with. Yeah, these guys, together with the cobra we just pulled out, is responsible, well two out of the big four of India, responsible for the most bites every year. That's pretty insane actually. Yeah, it is. And, I mean, they are pretty well behaved, but still not a good bite to get so usually these guys are pretty good at hanging out like easily accessible today we have one one is hiding over there and one is in there so they are scattered around yeah they are that one looks a bit curious maybe we just yeah because it's actually a pain in the ass to grab them when they're in this one because I have to lift it up and this enclosure is not tall enough to lift the entire cave up. I have to use another hook to kind of lift that and scoop with the other. Oh okay. Which is not easy to do. Yeah, it really sucks. That yeah. one's really curious. Yeah, they all are. Well, one is a little bit more shy than the other. Two, but we'll see. Is this a shy one? I thought that was the shy one. Oh, do you hear that? Yeah, I heard. That is the scales from it together, right? Yeah. Wow. That is very cool. I that is why they call the saw scale vipers because the scales are so rough that when they rub them together, they make almost a rattling sound. Yeah, and. These guys are small, so the sound is not very loud, but when they're big enough, they will make some serious noise. Yeah, that was really cool. I'm so yeah. glad I got that on, um, on film. Yeah. Sorry, you probably see a lot of armpit right now because... No, actually not. Because I... Uh, man, oh man, these were... These are normally not this difficult. But yeah. They're, um, they're a bit camera shy. Yeah. 
they normally don't see a lot of people, so I'm gonna have to do this and so these guys are they can be really slippery on the hook when they want to. But sometimes that's what's a good one. Yeah. Sometimes it's not so difficult. There's two in the box. Yeah, so is the third one still in here or I think it's behind oh, that cork. Maybe? Yeah there. Yeah they actually oh, forgot to film that way. They actually blend in very good with their, their environment. Yeah. And now I guess we have a dog that's doing all sort of crazy stuff. Yeah. Check her in. Oh, he's sleeping. And then I have no idea what that was. Yeah, be a little bit helpful. There we go. Go, I was about to say. I've never had this much trouble picking them out. No, they're usually pretty placid. Yeah. Today they are not cooperating. No, and these little stones do not help. No. Looks good, but when you're putting yeah. snakes out, yeah, and. Actually, can be a problem to have. Well, a well decorated enclosure. Yeah, for sure. And also, since this enclosure is so low, it can be a bit tricky to maneuver. I need to get these guys in a bigger one. There we go. Not as pain free as I hope, but. Well, at least they're in the box. Yeah. So here you guys have the Solstice Vipers, and if you have seen my brother's channel, you should be pretty, what to say? Yeah, you should be pretty familiar with them. Familiar these. with them, yeah. Because I feature them quite a lot, because uh, as far as Vipers go, these might be the most fun I've ever worked with. Right? Because they're so active and so curious. Um, normally not this, you know, difficult. But well, at least they're in the box. Yeah. So, time to move on to another side. So, who lives in this enclosure? So, this is uh, an Angolan coral cobra. Uh, a cool little snake from Africa, obviously. Angola is in Africa. Uh, it's, I, I mean, you heard the name coral cobra, but this is not a true cobra. Uh, it's an elapid, so it's in the same family as cobras, but it's, yeah, like I said on my channel, uh, just like the king cobra, it's not a real cobra. This is the same thing, except this is the polar opposite. Like, instead of getting, like, huge, this one is fully adult and it's like having a baby cobra for life. And he's he's actually a really nice guy. He's very, very easy to handle. He's quite active. And yeah. Just a, just a really cool snake. And since he's so cool, I'm stepping back. Yeah, you're letting me do this? Yeah. Okay. Let's get another shot of this. Okay. Hey there, buddy. And yeah, guys, to be honest, I've, I have actually handled this snake before, so... Can you see if uh, it's a good angle? Yeah. Okay. Let me actually... Got a bit of fat in there, maybe. No, it's just a bit skittish. So yeah, just like that, what would you, do you, now? you just pull it in and use the hook and just lift it up, like as, okay. far, yeah, as far it, or just do that and just I lift don't it up. I smash him with it, smash him on me. Yeah. So maybe get the lid of the box. 
this and then we hook him yeah right. so he can be a bit fast but yeah he's super super Chilled. classic yeah. Uh, you see how chilly is? And how toxic is he? Uh, yeah, they actually don't really know a lot about these guys' venom. But uh, they say that it is like, you know, real cobra venom. Okay. So it, they are very venomous, just that they have a very, very small dose of venom. And what type of toxin is it? Yeah, this would be a hemotoxic venom. Hemotoxic? Yeah, so if you would get a bite from these guys, uh, it would shut down your respiratory system and basically your brain signals to all the organs in the body. Okay. So you don't want to get bit by this snake? No. Even though deaths are extremely rare from these guys. But still, you do not want to risk it okay good to know yeah time to put them back in a box or in the box i mean so you guys can see i'm not very used to handling venomous snakes but i will get there one day so well it's a little bit nerve-wracking but this snake is very chill so yeah. I'm not that nervous actually, but as you guys understand, you do not want to get bit by this snake. Yeah. So but this is dangerous for real. Yeah, but if there's a snake you should train with, this one is a great one to start with. Yeah. He's a good boy. Yeah, he really is. So, now it's time for what snake? So, this is... Uh, an Indo-Chinese spitting cobra, or commonly known as a black and white spitting cobra. She is a bit unique though, because she doesn't have any black in her, so she's just white. That's pretty cool actually. Yeah, uh, I've actually never seen another spitting cobra that looks like this. And nobody actually gets to see her that much because tends to hang out in this tube, so yeah, this is a, a hissy hissy tube, but yeah. She does not like that. Oh. But at least she's out now. Yeah. So, ooh, she's a bit feisty today. She's normally just so well behaved, but yeah, I guess it's easy to get pissed off when someone come pokes you in your ass when you sleep. Yeah. And I would not like that to happen to me at least. Yeah, and it appears that she is very deep in shed. So yeah. That would explain why she's so cranky. Because she's never this dark otherwise. But yeah, now she's out as well, so... Yeah. And this is neurotoxic. Exactly. Neurotoxin. Yeah. So this shuts down your nervous system and... Uh, well, it basically shuts down your whole body, right? Exactly. So, if I were to get bit by a lapid, what should I do? Uh, first of all, uh, you should try to, if you get bit in the finger, try to strangle the circulation and keep the venom in one place so it doesn't travel. Because it, the longer it, it takes to travel, the longer it will take for the body to shut down. And that could actually mean the difference between life and death. And if I were to get bit by, let's say, a puff adder or the, or the soul skin vipers, then I should not... Yeah, uh, the, the complete opposite. You want it to spread as much as possible to reduce the amount of damage in one spot. 
So uh, that's a good rule of thumb to have. A lap bed, uh, make a tourniquet. Yeah. Vipers, do not do that. Exactly. And now, this is your least toxic snake, right? Yeah, I, I would... I mean, drop by drop, I would imagine that it is. Uh, otherwise, I would say that it's the coral cobra, but... Yeah, drop by drop, I think this is the loser. Or winner. Depending on how you see it. And just to be clear, guys, this does not mean that it's not dangerous. Because if you're allergic to venom, you know, even a bee sting can be quite serious. Yes. So if you're allergic to venom, all venomous snakes, even hognose snakes, can actually be dangerous for you. Yeah. And I mean, this one does have a hemotoxin. And it, it is not that bad. It really isn't, but it's still bad enough. Yeah. And you really don't want to get bit by this guy. Uh, yeah, I hear a cobra. Yeah, I heard it too. <laughs> she is really pissed off. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so uh, this guy... Uh, he can be a bit tricky to hook. I can't really explain it, but like he, if he wants to, he will slip right off the hook. And you have to kind of do it a couple of times, and he will kind of tense up in a way, and it feels kind of like he's locking onto the hook. And Just like the male puff did, I, I felt, you know, when he was yeah. he stiff in the body, then I'm okay, I, okay, I can pick you up now. Yeah, it's the same with this guy. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea how he will react when I open. Because he's re he's just next to the well, we call it the glass door. Yeah. He's right there. So he's right there. And also, since he tends to be a bit slippery, I have the box here on top of another box in case he falls down. Because I mean. They're still very sensitive animals. Yeah, and this actually this position is, to be honest, really dangerous if you not if you don't know what you're doing. So if you were to open this now, you are not going to use just your hand. In this situation, you need to use a hook or some kind of tool, right? Yeah. Like, sure. I mean, over here. Yeah. Like in that position, of course. Open, open that up, and as you can see. I'm gonna do it like that, and I'm gonna hold the lid because he can actually kind of jump out. But, oh yeah, as you can see. Oh well, what? Wow! So that he, was really good. Yeah, he tends <laughs> up right away. He's ready to move. Yeah. Like he's been a bit cranky lately and not really been in the mood to hang out on the hook. So I'm happy he didn't cause any issues today. Yeah. But yeah, this... And of course, the, oh. the, the, this is... Uh, yeah, he's still striking at me. Yeah. He is pissed off. Yeah, so maybe not in such a good mood as I thought, but still. Yeah. I think I could feel the, the wind from the strike when he hit the net. That's pretty scary, actually. Yeah. And here's the cor coral cobra. You see, he looks really beautiful. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he has a great pattern. Yeah. Uh, which he actually shows quite a lot, if I'm being honest. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. All, all of your snakes are beautiful, of course. Yeah, they are. They so are. If this lady is. How oh, energy is. Yeah, she's not yeah, being. You see, she is really. And as I said in my channel before, when a snake is going through shed, they can be real cantankerous. And what I've noticed, especially when it comes to venomous snakes, they tend to be more defensive when they're in shed than uh, non venomous. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I get from. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. So now it's just. Or not guess, but there's one snake left, and it's a big one. 
It's this guy left. And uh, Tom actually asked me to leave the room for this because this is not a snake to mess with. Yeah. Uh... And he is really nervous around people, so more than one people in this room maybe can. Yeah, I, I can't guarantee the safety. Uh, and also, uh, this lid for his box, because, I mean, even if I wanted to use another box, I can't, because they're all occupied. But this... And too small. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, he could fit, but it's a nightmare to, to do it. I have tried and, and succeeded, but it takes a long time. But yeah, this, this lid do not slid on very easy so uh, last time I picked him out it, he managed to escape about four times before I actually got the lid on so uh, yeah that's why I don't want anyone else in the room so uh, yeah I decided we're actually gonna lift the whole enclosure because I do not trust this at all and just for safety because Putting him in, in this box is what you said the most dangerous thing to do with the snake. Yeah, it is. And like I said, uh, last time he shot out like four times. And that was pretty close to me. Sure, he didn't try to attack, but I mean, his mood changes from time to time. Sometimes he can be nice, or nicer, and sometimes he can be super angry and just yeah be totally crazy and i'm i'm actually not feeling up for it you know i'm i mean we've been doing this so i'm also a bit tired which is also super super dangerous uh, so yeah we're just gonna lift the whole thing out and yeah because that's the safest way to do it yeah and yeah, in this case, it actually is. When it comes to venomous, safety always comes first. Yeah, I mean, sure, it would be cool content and everything, but I value my life more than good content. Yeah. And so should you. So now we're gonna move the snakes back to their enclosures and we're gonna see a before and after, I promise. And while we're doing this, I'm going to be the cameraman for my brother as well. So I'm going to hold his camera, so yeah. Yeah, and we're letting the saw scale wipers back in first. Yeah, that one seems to be excited. See if I can get more than one. Well, no, perhaps not. So back inside. So I, I didn't film. If you're um, if you're watching this episode, I didn't film when I took them out, but they were a hassle. And then, of course, again, if you watch West Bay Reptiles, you will see they give me a hard time, and. You will also hear them rubbing their scales together. That was awesome. Yeah, it was. And of course, that's why they're called saw scale vipers, if you've ever wondered. Get back inside with you. That so, went a lot smoother than before. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, and now it's the baby cobra. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was quite skittish. Yeah, I did actually film this, as you saw, but as of now, I have no idea if I'm gonna even have that footage in this because it was not the best. But yeah, I think I'm gonna make it as easy for him as possible. Yeah. There we go. No. Wrong way, dude. Yo. Buddy. Ooh. Oh well, he ended up where he should. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, just take a look at that. He's so, so pretty. 
It's adorable. Super, super angry today because she's really deep in shit. So I'm actually gonna do this as safely as possible, I guess. Yeah, or as simple as possible for her. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Well, that's not safe. Nope. But yeah, I think I'm gonna. I had a plan that I would just. Let her find her own way out without me disturbing her. Yeah, does. And we'll see if that actually works. Make sure it doesn't fall out. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I. Yeah, sorry. Well. But that was easy enough. Yeah. I thought it would be smoother. And. She actually made a little mess, but I'm happy she did it in there and not right when I put her back, so yeah. But yeah, I know, clean bowels and clean enclosure and soon a very clean skin. And she always looks amazing right after she sheds, so I hope that will happen soon. This is going to be great for her. Yeah, just a bit more stuff to hide in would be amazing, but yeah, I can add that. I'm going to show you guys as well. Have the spitting cobbler on your home. Actually looking great. Deep in shed, she's still a really good looking snake. So, this is the male puff feather in his new enclosure as well. And he looks freaking amazing. No substrate and the, well, the branches and everything. He blends in really well. Yeah, this looks like he just belongs. Yeah. It's quite amazing to see. It looks perfect. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a closer shot of him. See, he is so beautiful. Well, now for the thing. Yeah, let's get her into her new enclosure as well. Can I please? There we go. The loop. Very, very exciting. So, she does have some very pretty colors as well. She has some pink hues. Um, I noticed that doesn't really show up well on the camera, but yeah, she is gorgeous. No, just as you know, guys, the camera does not do snakes justice. No, they never do. Well, talk about having room to move around. Yeah, yeah, I think she'll really enjoy. So, uh, oops, doing the copperhead now, and he's the only one who's in a box with substrate. I see the seam. He is so well camouflaged, it's, it's actually insane. 
his head is right there. The camouflage is insane, even in this substrate. Yeah, and this is not his natural substrate. But there are a lot of uh, copper heads. Okay, yeah, hold on one second, I want to show my... Guys, see? His head is right there. This is actually insane. Yeah, it's, it's actually really nice to see uh, the camouflage. Like, uh, like I've, I've said before, um, he is from the Trans Pecos, which is more of a desert. Uh, yeah, it is a desert. But most copperheads are found in like wood areas, so this camouflage is really, really good for that. And yeah, yeah, he's not twitchy. Happy. Yeah, he's really twitchy today. Like it would be nice if he was as easy going out as he was going in because he was by far the easiest to take out and now he appears to be the most difficult to take yeah, back he's, in he's gonna, yeah. yeah he's gonna bolt he's like a jack in the box right now yeah but now there we fast 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 there we go buddy that went pretty easy, actually. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to touch you a little. So, now all the snakes are in their enclosure, right? No. The no. coral cobra. Coral cobra. We cannot Sorry. forget my little boy, the coral cobra. And just before, just take a look at that guy. He is upset. Well, this is one pissed off snake. Yeah. And well, just the same thing with this guy. The camera does not do him justice. Yeah, he's actually spectacular in real life. He's, with one word, clean. Yeah. Like, I've seen a lot of copperheads, but mm, yeah, I might be Bit biased. biased maybe. Yeah. But I don't care. I think he's the prettiest of them all. So one last guy to go. Camera reception. So don't be fooled by the Naya Siamensis. Because, well, we already did her. But yeah, my little boy. Yeah, he's been eager to get out. So, yeah, uh, yes. yeah, yeah, he's he didn't he does his at some time. Uh, but yeah. He's still a good boy. Just look at that jet black head. So cool. Yeah, I love him so much. Like when it comes to personality, yeah there's not a lot of snakes who can beat this guy. He looks amazing. Yeah, and he's quite fresh out of shit too, so... So, now the day after, in daylight, I'm gonna show you guys the room, how it looks now, and it's, well, quite a difference. You're gonna see... about roomy so you guys can see this is a lot of space so what do you guys think should I get like a nice carpet like a nice round carpet here maybe I think that can give that yeah what do you guys think should he have have something on the floor or just leave it barren like this. Yeah, 
I am getting some stuff up on the walls, but uh, I don't have any of that yet. It's on, on its way, so... Yeah, it's gonna look amazing. Yeah, I really think so. Yeah, this is the kind of room that I would like to have, you know, the space. But my room is, unfortunately, a bit smaller. Yeah. But yeah, this is amazing. I, I love this room. And the enclosures, my old enclosures, looks really good here. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, you can. Let's see if we can see the guys that lives in here. Barely, the reflection, uh, yeah. Barely, barely. And this guy, yeah, he's probably hiding in one of the hides. Yeah. But they have a lot of space. Yeah. And in this enclosure, the big one, actually, maybe this is going to live a couple of animals in here. But yeah. we're not going to reveal that yet because it's still in the air, so to speak. Yeah. We haven't decided yet. Yeah, and I have to kind of set it up a little yeah, bit. It needs lighting and heating. Well, yeah, mostly heating because lights, of course, they're important. But if you don't have lights in the beginning, the animals don't, well, they don't die without light. So you can light, of course, it's important, but Heating is most important if the animal needs heat. Yeah. So yeah. But uh, as it looks now, probably it's going to move in. Well, I don't even gonna re reveal what kind of animals, but you're gonna see that in the future if that happens. Yeah. We'll keep you updated. Yeah. But yeah, this is the room, and well, it looks freaking amazing. Oh, well, yeah, it's a bit echoey, but that's gonna change as well. Yeah, we're gonna fix that at some point. And this guy does not want to show his face. Well, he's right over there. Yeah, he was out before. I checked in on the room this morning and he was cruising around a bit. Yeah, this beautiful boy, he is gorgeous. It's gorgeous, truly gorgeous. Let's see these little cuties. Of course, none of them is out at the moment. But this guy is. He's out cruising around. Yeah, he's in the back. I don't know if you guys can see him there. Okay. That's pretty good actually. Little baby cobra. So yeah, guys, that's it from this video. I'm going home today, so I'm gonna go by train. So me and my dog is gonna go home in a couple of hours. So yeah, it was really fun doing this with my brother and we're gonna do another collab in the future. And if that's gonna be at my brother's place or at my place, we don't have decided yet. Yeah. So we'll see about that. But yeah, and the thing is, the animals that are probably going in this enclosure is going to be both of us, but they're going to live here at my brother's place because yeah. I don't have the space. Yeah, but I do, so... Yeah, and he has the enclosure, as you guys can see, so... Yeah. Well, you probably can guess that it's pretty big animals, so yeah. But anyways, guys, that's it for today. So, I'll leave you with this. Take care, be kind to someone, and at least always try to show other people respect. So, till next time, goodbye, guys.